Hot Wheels Unleashed is a Windows exclusive video game which does not work on Linux using Proton. But right now I'm playing the online multiplayer using a high performance Windows virtual machine running on Linux. And by the end of this video, you can too. Hello and welcome. I'm Steve and this is Blaine Man Studios. In this part three video, I'm gonna walk you through creating your first gaming ready virtual machine that has full access to your graphics card using VFIO. If you're new to the series, check the links in the description for the previous parts where we went through hardware requirements, installing Linux and configuration. But if you've been following along, great job. Keep it up, you're almost there. Before we create the VM, you'll need to download the Windows ISO. You can search the web for download Windows 10 ISO or click the link in the description. And while we're doing downloads, you should also download the vert.io ISO from Fedora, which is also linked in the description. This virtual CD has Windows drivers for a special type of virtual hard drive that performs better than others, but we'll cover that later. After the downloads complete, open vert manager and click the button to create a new VM. Select local install media because we're going to be using that Windows 10 ISO as an install disk. Navigate to where you downloaded the ISO and select yes if it asks you about permissions. Then pick an amount of RAM. A good starting point is half your system's RAM. So if you have 16 gigabytes of RAM, start with 8192 megabytes and we can always change this later. Select one core for now because we're going to edit this later when we have more options. Then create a QCOW2 image. To Linux, this is just going to be a file living on your file system somewhere, growing as it gets used more. But to our Windows VM, it's going to be a full working hard drive that does anything a real one can do. Let's make it 200 gigabytes and move on to the next step. Then give your virtual machine a name. I usually include a number because I know I'll probably create another one later with some tiny tweak or improvement. Then make sure you check Customize Configuration Before Install and click Finish. In this first screen, set Chipset to i440FX and Firmware to UEFI. Then you'll want to double check that the hypervisor is set to KVM. If this isn't the case, you'll have to go back and double check the host configuration that we did in the previous video. Specifically, you'll want to make sure that KVM is installed and that its kernel modules are loaded. Then in the CPU tab, we'll set our CPU topology. Check the box for manual topology and I'll explain what the fields are. Sockets is the number of CPUs you bought. Like most gaming computers, mine only has one. Cores is the number of cores in each of those CPUs. I have an eight core CPU and I'm gonna pass six of them into the VM. This makes sure the host still has two cores for whatever it needs to do while the VM is running. Threads is the number of threads per core. On Intel, if you have hyperthreading, set this to two. On AMD, if you have one of those CPUs that says something like 16 cores, 32 threads, then set this to the number of threads per core. I don't have any of that, so I'll leave it at one. And don't worry if you don't get this perfect on the first try, it's very easy to change later. Next, you can check the amount of RAM, which hard drives are bootable, and your hard drive configuration. All of these can stay the same for now. This next part is optional, but I'm going to delete the network interface card, or NIC. This is essentially removing your virtual machine's access to the internet. I'm going to add this back later, but for now, I don't want the VM to have access to the internet. Because when you install Windows offline, it doesn't make you log into a Microsoft account, which is the way I prefer it. Click Begin Installation and it will take you to an EFI shell. We'll use a few commands to connect to the install disk, navigate to the right directory, and start the Windows installation program. Type fs0 colon, change directory EFI, change directory boot, then boot x64 and then press any key when it asks you to. Then you just want to run through a Windows install like normal. You can click this button if you don't have a product key or don't have one right now. And then eventually it will reboot and ask you a bunch of questions. I usually turn off all features that have to do with Virtual Assistant and sending information back to Microsoft. When it's done, you can turn off the VM. 
Next, we're going to modify the virtual hardware so that our VM is ready for gaming level performance. Click the light bulb icon to bring up the virtual hardware settings. It's called virtual hardware because really we're just changing settings and software, but to the VM, it's like we're adding, removing, and changing actual hardware. For example, we're done with the Windows 10 install disk, so we can remove that ISO. Then let's add a new virtual hard drive. You can make this one really small because we're not going to use it for much, and set its type to virt.io. We're adding this so that Windows can install the virt.io drivers so that on our next boot, our main hard drive will be able to use virt.io for its performance benefits. Then let's add the virt.io ISO we downloaded earlier. This has the drivers on it, and the VM will see it as a CD. Then add the PCI devices for the GPU. In the last video, we went over that I have four of these for my GPU, and we talked about how to make sure that the host operating system isn't using them. Then let's re-add the NIC if you deleted it earlier like me. You can check your boot options so that the drive we installed Windows to is bootable and is highest on the list, and then start the VM. Then install your GPU drivers like you would on any other computer. For me, this is going to the NVIDIA website, downloading the right installer, and then running it. Next, use the virt.io CD we added to install the virt.io drivers. You can check this worked by looking at your tiny virt.io drive in Device Manager. Now you're ready to power down your VM, and next time we start it up, it will be gaming ready. Now we can remove that tiny virt.io drive because we just needed it for help installing those drivers. And you can remove the virt.io driver disk too. Next, we'll need to change our virtual disk's bus type to virt.io for the performance benefits. The simplest way would be to remove the disk and create it with a new type. But I want to show you how to do this with XML because this will be a helpful skill later when you need to make adjustments to your VM and its settings. In the main Vert Manager window, go to Edit, Preferences, and check Enable XML Editing. Then go back to the virtual hardware settings, and on our SATA drive, change to the XML tab. Change the target bus to Vert.io, and change the address type to PCI, then click Apply. If you've ever built a PC, you know about SATA cables that connect your drive to your computer. What we've done here virtually is changed out those cables for a new interface type. And because our VM has the drivers to use that new interface, it can talk to the same drive using a new interface that performs faster. Now we're almost done. We just need to make sure our guest OS is ready to boot using the GPU as its main display. So I'm going to plug the HDMI output from my computer's graphics card into another port on my monitor so that when it starts, I'm able to see my screen and my games. And since we won't be using this little virtual display anymore, we'll need to add a mouse and keyboard to the VM. I'm going to use USB device assignment. With these devices assigned to the VM, they won't be able to be used by the host once the VM starts. So I think it's helpful at this point to plug in a second mouse. That way, if anything goes wrong with the VM, you can use these helpful power buttons to turn it off. The force off option here is the virtual machine equivalent to pulling the power cable. With all that out of the way, you are ready to start your VM. As it boots, switch your monitor over to the HDMI output coming out of your virtual machine, and you should see your Windows virtual machine booting up using your graphics card. If the mouse and keyboard are working, you're ready to download and play some games. I'll run a benchmark here just to prove the performance is real, but if you'd like a more in-depth analysis into VM performance, check out my series called Are Gaming VMs Fast? I've already done benchmarks and a latency analysis comparing a native install to a virtual machine, and I've also done a comparison into the performance benefits of different virtual disk types. But if you've made it this far, I am psyched for you. This series is done and you're officially off the rails and ready to start using your computer the way you like. From here, I might make other videos about performance tweaks like CPU pinning or advanced concepts like looking glass and laptop considerations. So let me know in the comments what you'd like to see next. Actually, Hackintosh VM might be pretty cool. So that's something I'm thinking about too. 
At this point, I just want to say thanks. So many of you have already let me know in the comments how helpful these videos are, or that these videos have helped you make the switch to Linux. And I just find that so exciting and inspiring. So from my heart, I just want to say thank you for giving me your attention. I'll see you in the next video or series or whatever it is, and don't forget to stay bland.